Let's stand all over this sanctuary, all over our homes, regardless of how we are tuned in. And let's syncopate hand claps of praises for the Most High God. Who's glad to be in the presence of the Lord on this morning? Come on, don't be shy. Don't be stiff. The Lord has shown too much rhythm in our lives. Somewhere along the line, the Lord has turned your stones of sorrows into breads of life. Somewhere along the line, the Lord has turned your dry well into living water. Somewhere along the line, the Lord has turned your mourning into mourning. So I don't care what the Lord, what has happened in your life, the Lord has been too good to you in your life. Give God a hand clap of praise. Don't be shy, don't be stiff. Come on, the Lord has been too active in your life, too mobile in your life. Welcome him on this morning. He is the holy of holies. He is the one and only one and only. He is the GOAT, not just sacrificially, but symbolically. He is the greatest of all time. He is the God of all times. He is the G GOAT, as he gave the greatest gift of all time. So, Lord, with that being said, we know that we can approach you in prayer with expectation, ready to resurrect all throughout this service, as you have gave your son for us. And that same spirit that resurrected Christ from the grave, as he had all power in his hands, Father God, I ask that that same spirit be replicated all throughout this service so that we can get up with all power in our families, with all power in our education, with all power in our homes, with all power in our minds, with all power in our spirits. 
oh God. And Lord, we know that you are the life giver of every wound bearer. And with that being said, Father God, just as though you breathed the breath of life into the first man, we ask that you breathe your breath of life into this first service on this morning, oh God. And Lord, we ask that you breathe your breath of joy into our sorrows. We ask that you breathe your breath of rejuvenation into our anticipation. And Lord, we ask that you bring your, breathe your breath of mourning into our mourning. It is in this that we come to you in full expectation, ready to receive you all throughout this service, in song, in sermon, and in speech, ready to be resurrected. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Let us prepare our hearts for worship. Good morning, St. James. It's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Anybody glad to be here this morning? We want to sing our opening hymn, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. You can put your hands together. Let's have a little church. Let's sing. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth. And mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Oh, heart, the herald angels sing glory to the newborn. Verse 2, Christ by high is heaven adored. Christ the everlasting Lord laid in time. Behold him come, offspring of a virgin's womb. Veiled in flesh the Godhead see, held incarnate deity. Pleased with the sin flesh to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn Verse 3 Hail the heaven-born prince of peace Hail the son of righteousness Light and life to all he brings Risen with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by. Born that we no more may die. Born to raise us from the earth. Born to give a second birth. Heart the herald angels sing glory to the new heart the herald angels heart the herald angels sing glory to the newborn heart the heart the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king. Come on, clap your hands for the king of kings and the lord of lords. You may be seated. Mm -hmm. You make me rich. When I receive your grace, yes. exceedingly, abundantly, above all I can ask or think, you meet my needs, 
my storehouse grows. I have so much I could never give it all away. I am living in the overflow because you make me rich when I receive your grace. Oh God, exceedingly, abundantly, above all I can ask or think, you meet my needs, my storehouse grows, I have so much I can never give it all away, I am living in the overflow, when your power save me and I will never be the same when I am boldly approaching my destiny and casting aside my chains because you assume the debt I owe paid it all to make me whole I have so much I can never give it all away I am living in the old save me and I will never be the same when I am boldly approaching my destiny and casting aside my chains because you assume the debt I owe paid it all to make me whole I have so much I can never give it all away Can I testify? My cup runs over. My cup runs over. My, my cup runs over and over and over and over and over. My cup runs over. My cup runs over. My cup runs over. Hey, my cup runs over, my cup runs over, my cup runs over. Hey, my, my cup runs over, my cup runs over, my cup runs over. Over and over again, my, my cup. Runs over, my cup runs over, my cup runs over. He gives me blessings. And my cup runs over. That the world can And the world can't take it away. I said it again, the world can't give. And the world can't take it away. Cause you make me rich. You make me rich. Oh God. Over and over again. You make me rich. Hey, you make me rich. Give it all you away. Make you make me rich. You make me rich, God. You make me rich. Blessing me over and over. You make me rich. Every morning when I wake up, I give you thanks. You make me rich. I have, I have so much I can never give it all. Good morning, St. James family and online friends. This is our moment of connection. Okay, here's a question. 
do you believe you have a personal responsibility to share your faith? Surveys have shown that the overwhelming majority of you would answer yes. Okay, so what about this question? Have you shared your faith with anyone in the last six months? Surveys have shown that a majority of you would answer this question? No. I guess it's just not as easy as it seems, or at least as easy as we'd like it to be. Well, here's another question. How many times have you personally invited an unchurched person to church? Now this seems simple, right? And yet, surveys tell us that almost half of you would answer zero. I mean, there are lots of reasons why we don't, right? Like, maybe it still feels a little awkward and uncomfortable. Or maybe we're just unsure how effective it is. Or we just expect to hear them say, well, no. Okay, so listen to this. When people are asked why they came to church in the first place, the vast majority of them say, I began attending because someone invited me. It wasn't the music or the pastor. It wasn't the child care, the youth program, or the building. Although these are all great things, important and valuable things, the main thing that got most of you up and through that door the first time wasn't any of these. It was an invitation. Christmas will be here soon, and it's the perfect time to share with others what your faith is all about. And it can all start with one more simple question. Want to come to church on Sunday? Let's change the stats and let God change hearts and lives this Christmas. And let's start with something simple. An invitation. Thank you for fellowshipping with us today. Welcome to church. St. James. Good morning. We're the Myricks, and we are here to present the Abbot reading and candle lighting. It's a reunion. Every time we go home, every time we embrace those we love, no matter how long it has been, it feels like sunrise, like the clouds are parting and the rain has ended. It is joy, nothing less than pure joy to grab hold of those who are home for us, who make home for us, whether we wake up to them every day or travel many miles to see them again. It is joy to go home. The, the prophet Zephaniah tells us to rejoice at the thought of going home. The prophet tells us to imagine being free being unburdened, being released to live, to fully live in the grace and wonder of life itself, surrounded by those who love us like no one else. And then to live like that was our truth, even now, even here, it is joy to go on. John the Baptist reminds us, however, that it takes choices to live in this joy. It doesn't just happen. We choose to make life a joy by how we love others, by how we serve and give and care for others, by how we do the job we do and how we impact the world around us. We build joy as we build a home in this world and the next. We light these candles, the candle of hope and of peace and of joy as a sign that we are on our way home and we walk with a skip in our step because we can see the destination and it is pure joy. It is time to go home. Thank you.
Good morning, St. James, friends and family. It is so nice to see your lovely faces this morning and for our online streaming audience. And we are so very happy to have you join us this morning as we worship God during this Advent season in spirit and in truth. Amen. Uh, I have the privilege and opportunity to go to the Lord in prayer. I've been asked to pray, and so before I get started, I would ask that you would see the names that would be scrolling on the screen behind me. There are several names. Prayer is so vitally important in the life of all of us as Christians. It gives us the opportunity not only to speak to our Father, but also, even more importantly, to listen to our Father, to hear what he has to say back to us, and then allow the Spirit of the living God that dwells within us to be obedient and to do what he tells us to do. I would ask right now that we go to God in prayer. Eternal God, eternal God, our Father, how excellent is thy name. Lord, we love you so very much because you first loved us. Father, we thank you for this opportunity during this Advent season as we stand on tiptoe anticipation, waiting for this celebratory day that we shout hallelujah for the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Father, we pray right now and ask that you would have mercy upon us. We pray, Father, collectively in corporate prayer that you would forgive us of our sins, Lord, that you would forgive us of those things we've said or done that is not in alignment with who you are as a holy and righteous God. Father, we come right now asking that you would give us, create in all of us a clean heart, Father, and renew a right spirit in us, Father, so that we can tell a, a dying world, Father, about your darling sons, Jesus the Christ. Let us always remember, Father, that during this time, Jesus truly is the reason for the season. Let us pause, let us think, let us give thanks, Father, for who he is. Lord, I wanna pray right now that you would please bless those persons who suffered this weekend with horrific tornadoes in the states of Arkansas and Kentucky, Lord, Missouri. Father, lives were lost. Father, and we pray and we lift up those families, Father, who not only lost lives but lost valuable possessions. Father, we know that you can replace possessions, but we cannot replace our lives, our our, our family, our friends, Father. So we lift up those persons in, in Kentucky and Arkansas and Missouri and, and where tornadoes touched down this weekend, Lord. We pray that you would allow those remaining families to lean upon you in their time of loss. We pray in the name of Jesus, Father, that you would give them, Lord, strength to, to carry forward, Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus that you would allow your Shekinah glory to fall on them and to fall on us to reach out to help our fellow Christians, to reach out and help those who are in desperate need, to reach out and be the hands, the feet, the eyes, and the ears of Jesus Christ in this need, Father. We pray right now, Father, that you would allow us to be bold and to reach out, Lord, to help those who are in desperate need. Father, we pray, Father, for those men and women who have lost loved ones. Lord, we, we had such a glorious service this week for Rosalind and, and her family, Father, for the, for the home going of her husband, Kevin, Kevin Ingle. Father, we pray for Brother Percival, and his family, Father, for, for the loss that they've suffered. We pray, Lord, for 
Brother Ike Gaucher and his family for their loss. We, we lift up Sister Felicia Barnes and, and family, Father, for Christian Symphony, Father. We pray, Father, that you would allow these persons, Father, to lean on you, that you would build them up in their time of loss. Father, we pray right now that you would bless every church that is open in the name of your son, Jesus the Christ. Father, we pray, Lord, right now for those men and women, Father, who are still out here, Father, suffering, Father, under bridges. Father, we pray for the least, the lost, those who are homeless. We pray, Father, that, that, that we would be able to supply meals, Father, that we would be able to supply comfort and, 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 and blankets, and, and Father, to, that, to, to go and to help those men and women, Lord, boys and girls who are living under bridges. Father, we ask that you would stop by the hospitals, Father. We pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you would be Jehovah Rapha, Lord, that you would be the great healer that you are, that you would heal those who are hospitalized. Father, we pray for marriages, that you would bind husbands and wives, Father, first with their relationship with you and then with each other. Lord, we pray for this, this church called St. James. All those who are members of this church, all those who are coming into this church to be fed, Lord, we pray that you would meet us at our point of need, Lord. We, we pray for the clergy in this house. We pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, for our senior shepherd and his family. We pray for Reverend Dr. Gregory Williams, Father, that you would allow him to break the bread of life this morning, to give us a word, Father, that we can apply to our lives. We pray for his family. We pray for his wife and his children, his, his grandson, Father. We lift them up to you and, and ask that you give him the wisdom that you gave Solomon, the perseverance that you gave Paul. Father, we pray right now, Lord, that you would allow him to lead these, your people, so that we can do the work that Christ would have us to do. And Father, at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, Lord, we will be careful to glorify you, give you honor and praise because of who you are. We thank you for all the clergy, Pastor Stevens and Pastor Sinkfield and Minister Lovely and Minister Hawkins. We thank you for all the clergy in this house. Bless us to be a blessing. It is in Jesus' righteous and holy name we pray and ask it all. And all the saints of God said, amen. You deserve the glory and the honor. I lift my hands and worship, and I bless your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. So we lift our hands and worship, and we bless your holy name you deserve you deserve the glory anybody know that and the honor, and the honor. so we lift our hands, we lift our hands in worship. and we bless your holy and name you deserve the glory yes you do god and the honor. And the honor. Anybody want to worship with us this morning? So we lift our hands and worship. My hands in worship. And we bless your holy and name. Bless your holy For name. you are great. You are great. You do miracles. You do miracles. So great. So great. Like 
Jesus. Let's sing it again. You deserve the glory. You deserve the glory. Anybody know God deserves all of our glory and the honor. And the honor. So we lift our hands and worship. We lift our hands and worship. And I bless your holy and name. I bless your holy name. For you deserve the glory. You deserve the glory. You deserve it all. I thank you, Jesus, and, and the, the honor. honor. So we lift our hands and worship. We lift my hands and worship. And we bless your holy and we bless name. Your holy hey, name. You are great. You, are great. you do miracles. You do miracles so great. great. There is no one there else. Is no Like you can, there's no one else there like you. No yeah. one else For like you are great. You do miracles so great. You do miracles, miracles, signs and wonders. There's no one else. No one else like you. Yeah, there is no one else. Jesus, there's no one else. There's no one else. There is no one else like you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Don't stop worshiping. Come on, put your hands together and bless you God. Come on, put your hands together and bless God. Do don't stop, don't stop, don't stop so blessing great. God in this house. There you know, you know, every once in a while, like I just believe that we need to give God the praise that's there due to God. No rise to your feet, rise to your feet, put your hands like together you and give God some praise in this house. He's worthy to be praised. Put your hands together. There's no one like you. There is no one like you. There is no one else. Say you are great. You are great. You do miracles. You do miracles so great. There is no one else. No one else like you. No, 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 no. There is no one else like you. No. Like the Lord, be seated in his presence. I believe that God is worthy to be praised. To our virtual congregation, to all of you that's in person today, there is a word from God. We thank God for these men. They are singing with power and conviction, and we praise God for them this morning. You know, I am excited today just to be alive, to be in the land of the living and Please don't forget to pray for those who were devastated this weekend. Not only are we going to pray for them, but we're going to send some money. Amen? You know, one thing about life that we have to be careful, you can be up today and down tomorrow. And we never know when trouble, can you say trouble? 
is going to knock on our doors. There is a word from God. I'm going to stand up, speak up, and shut up. But I do want to say to you this morning, if I preach like something is wrong with me, just pray for me. Because you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. Isaiah chapter 12, verse number 1. Don't stand. Turn to it, if you will. Isaiah 12, 1, reading from the NIV version of the Bible. Hear now the word of God. In that day you will say, I will praise you, Lord, although you were angry with me. Your anger has turned away, and you have comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. I want to get to verse 3. With joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Just for a few minutes, I want to use as a subject a holiday praise. A holiday praise praise. Oh, gracious God, move me out of the way and help me to speak to your people for a few minutes. God, loose my spirit. Move now, flesh and blood. God, move us out of the way. Open up our ears and our hearts, God, so we can receive this message. Come, Holy Spirit. Let every believer say amen. You know, a lot of people are frustrated they are frustrated during this holiday season because some folks let Christmas frustrate them. I was driving the other day and there were two cars in front of me. And the car that I was behind started blowing at the car in the front of that car. And the person couldn't move because the light was on red. But the person was still blowing, trying to get out of traffic. My brothers and my sisters, I believe that, Christian sh that Christmas should be one of the most exciting times of the year. Wave at me if you believe that today. I believe that nothing is more important, nothing is more essential in our lives than Christmas because that's when Jesus Christ came into the world to die for our sins. So saints, if you're frustrated this holiday season, be careful now. Some people are frustrated, and it doesn't take much because they're already frustrated. And others are frustrated because they are trying to meet everyone's expectation during this holiday season. I'm going to teach this. For some people, Christmas is all about them. Don't get me wrong now. There's nothing wrong with having a little fun on Christmas. There's nothing wrong with giving and exchanging gifts. There's nothing wrong with, the, with attending your uh, company's Christmas party, doing the wobble, the electric slide, throwing your hands in the air and waving them like you just don't care. There's nothing wrong with doing a little Christmas shopping. There's nothing wrong with traveling, visiting family and friends. But I'm here to tell you that Christmas is not about us. Christmas is about what Jesus came in the world to do for us. Can I teach? Christmas is about Advent. Say Advent. Advent means the arrival of Jesus Christ. One theologian said that Advent is the unveiling of God in Jesus. So my brothers and my sisters, I praise God today for the virgin birth. I praise God today because God sent Jesus into the world to save a wretch like me. And if I don't get any gift for Christmas, I'm going to praise God for what he has done for me. He woke me up this morning. I'm going to praise God because I'm still alive in the midst of a pandemic. I'm going to praise God because he keeps blessing me over and over again. Come on, give God one more hand clap of praise for a few minutes. We're in the holiday season, correct? I'm going to give God a holiday praise. And if I live to see January... 2022 i'm gonna give god a new year day praise i'm gonna give god an everyday praise i'm gonna praise him because he's worthy to be praised can i slow it down and teach this i have to teach this now in our text the hymnists the theologian the bible scholars uh 
highlight five reasons why we should give God praise. Uh, when you look at this hymn, uh, it's really a hymn written to the church. And the psalmist is writing this hymn because Israel have rejected God. Uh, yes, they said to themselves, we don't need you, God. So the psalmist is writing because he's telling Israel, you need to turn back to God. And in this text, the Israelites have frustrated God. You, you, you know, it's one thing to frustrate people. But when you frustrate God, and they have frustrated God because God brought them out of Egypt. And as soon as they got a taste of freedom, they started worshiping idol gods. They started saying, well, uh, we don't want to live holy anymore. We want to live like folks in the world. Sound familiar? And they refused to uh, repent of their sins. And God said in Isaiah chapter 1, verse number 3, y'all have lost your mind. Don't play with me now. Have you ever act like you lost your mind? How oh, y'all trying to accident up in here? Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 3, please turn there just for a minute. God said, Israel, I brought you out. And now you want to act like you don't know me? So God said in Isaiah 1, 3, the ox knows its master. The donkey knows its manger. But Israel, my people, they don't understand who brought them out. Slow it down, Dr. Williams. Verse 4, woe to your sinful nation. A people whose guilt is great. A brood of evildoers. Children given to corruption. They have forsaken the Lord. They have sprung the Holy One of Israel and turned their backs on him. God said, I brought you out. And if you don't think you need me, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my hands off of you. I'm going to withhold the rain so your crops won't grow. I'm going to uh, withhold my mercy. I'm going to withhold my grace. I'm going to turn you over so the enemy can defeat you if you don't think you need me. Mr. Big Stuff, who do you think you? Can I teach you just a little more? So the Bible says, the Bible says that God uh, took his hands off of Israel. And the Bible says that Israel uh, ran back to God and they started weeping. They started praying. They started fasting. And the Bible says, watch this now, that they are praising God for what God is going to do in the future. No, 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 no. That went over some of y'all head. They are still in captivity. So, uh, Isaiah chapter 12, they are praising God, you got to get it, for what God is going to do in the future. Some of y'all are saying, well, man, that had nothing to do with me. See, the problem with the church is, point number one, don't wait until you receive your breakthrough to express appreciation to God. We have to learn how to give God a future praise. Do I have any future praises in here? We have to start praising God before we receive our breakthrough. Before uh, God answer our prayers. We got to start praising God. Y'all not going to help me. Before we receive our miracle. Before God comes through. We have to learn how to praise God before we get what we want and need from God. Israel. Check this out. They are uh, asking God to deliver them from physical oppression. God says, okay, no problem. I'm going to bring you out. But God says, I can't bring you out just physically. I have to bring you out spiritually also. Sometimes we want God to work on the physical. But if God doesn't bless you spiritually, you're just physically crazy. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So God told Israel, watch this now, I'm going to bring you out. But before I bring you out, I have to work on your heart. I have to make sure that you have changed spiritually. Ah, so the Bible says they started praising God. Watch this. But God says now, 
I'm going to send my son. And my son is going to change you spiritually. So in Isaiah 12, 1, it says, in that day, I will praise you. Watch this. Although you are angry with me, your anger has turned away and you have comforted me. Now, notice in this text, their worship has now turned to confession. I have to teach this. You see, sometimes God can't bless some folks because we don't want to confess our stuff. I don't care whether you have 10 PhDs, $35 million in the bank or $1 in the bank. The Bible says that all have and fallen short of the glory of God. Some folks don't want to confess. Yes. Now, I've, I've done some stuff I had no business doing. And I'm so glad that God didn't punish me like I deserved. Mercy is not getting what you do deserve, even though you deserve it. Do I have any mercy folks in here that don't mind giving God a hand clap for God's mercy? So God told Israel, he said, now, chill, help is on the way. Isaiah chapter 7, he says to them, he says, therefore, the Lord himself will give a sign, the 14th verse, and the virgin shall conceive and bring forth the son, and you shall call him Emmanuel. So God told Israel, don't faint, help is on the way. And I don't know who I'm speaking to this morning, but somebody is going through something. And God told me to tell you that help is on the way. Now, you see, you see, you see, now, you got to praise God because something else in this verse struck me. The psalmist says, I praise you because your anger have turned away. Somebody's saying, oh, I don't get that. See, in the Old Testament, when God was angry with you, he dealt directly with you. He dealt with the priests. You know, you had to kill a goat, go to the church, pour the blood in front of the altar. But the psalmist says, though you are angry with me, I will praise you. In the New Testament, God is no longer angry with us. Because Jesus Christ took on our anger, God's anger on the cross. Just so we could be set free. So you ought to praise God right now that, that, that he's no longer angry with you because of Jesus. What he did for you on the cross. Can I run on to point number two? Authentic worship is birthed out of spiritual freedom. Liberation. You know why some folks can't worship properly? It's difficult to worship God when you don't really grasp what he's done for you what he has brought you out of. It's difficult to worship God if you think that you have arrived at your destination all by yourself. Can I teach? Isaiah chapter 12, verse number two, slow it down, Dr. Williams said, surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord himself is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. The Greek word for uh, salvation is soteria. Which simply means to rescue, to save from danger. It means that God has saved you from the penalty of sin. So when the psalmist says that God is my salvation, he is saying that God is everything that I need. And he or she, they are really cognizant of who saved them. Some people think they're saved by their own powers. Well, I got up this morning. How are you going to get up and not say thank you? To the one who woke you up this morning. The worshipers, the worshipers' strength, uh, the worshipers' praise is also in the strength of God. Strength means that God is your provider, resource, your protection, and your help. Song means that the Lord is your joy. He is your peace. And that's why the Bible says, watch this now. That God will keep your minds in perfect peace. Those whose minds are stayed on him. And can I get to my third point? Because I want to stop by your house real fast. Praise God for the living water. Time out. Slow down. Go from 25 to 5. The worshiper says in verse 3. Watch this now. 
your joy. You will draw waters from the wells, plural, of God's salvation. What is he talking about? Listen to me. More people are depressed during the holiday season than any other season. And I was reading in the uh, paper the other day, millions of people during this time of year think about committing suicide. Police officers report that uh, there is an increase in suicidal attempts. Psychologists and uh, therapists says that patients during this time of year suffers from depression. And I said to myself, what's going on? And let's tell the truth. This year has been a challenging year. COVID, COVID, COVID has made it difficult for folks because uh, we still wear masks. We still are afraid to hug. Some of y'all leave out on church and we, I do a fist bump. Some of y'all run out and say, don't touch me. Some of y'all want to hug. Some of y'all want to do a high five. Some of y'all want no five. We are living in trouble times. Yes, and the Omicron virus is trying to raise its ugly head. For many people, listen, I don't know who I'm speaking to. The holiday season is a tough time. You've lost loved ones. We had two funerals this week. Money is tight for some folks just because you might have a low cash in the bank. Doesn't mean that your neighbor is okay. Loneliness is a problem in the church. It's a problem that we don't want to talk about. But a lot of people are lonely because their kids are gone. Some folks are lonely because they are by themselves. You see, loneliness is a problem. And you see, I'm here to tell you that some people are lonely because they have loved ones who are serving uh, in the Air Force, in the uh, Navy. They won't be home for Christmas. But the psalmist gives us hope today. The psalmist says that you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And I'm going slow because I want you to get this. When the psalmist says, draw water from the wells of salvation, uh, he simply means water is symbolic of life. He simply means that Jesus Christ is your lifeline. Jesus is your peace. Jesus is your joy. And you see, he simply means that if you're thirsty, if you're tired, if you're frustrated, if you're lonely, Jesus is the only one that can fill that void. John 4, 14, Jesus says, whoever is thirsty, watch this now. I shall give to him living water. Watch this now. Yes, a fountain of water will spring up inside of them. Jesus has something else to say about water in John 7. He says, now, now the last days, which was the greatest days of the feast, Jesus stood and exclaimed, saying, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Watch this. Whoever believes in me, the scripture says. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. What are you talking about, Jesus? Jesus, when he uses water, he is referring to himself, and he is also referring to the Holy Ghost. Somebody say the Holy Ghost. So when he is uh, saying living water, he is saying, I put something inside of you called the Holy Ghost. And when you are lonely, the Holy Spirit will show up and say, I got you. When your back is against the wall, the Holy Spirit will show up and say, look here, I'm right here by your side. The Holy Spirit will show up and keep you. Greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. So you have living water. Don't you walk around with your head hung down on the holiday season. Jesus Christ is living inside of you. The old folks used to say, this joy. They want me to preach a little bit, but I'm trying to teach a little something. Come on, somebody. Now, 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 I have in my hand a card that St. James paid cash for. And it says, December the 18th, come to uh, St. James because we're going to give out food to folks that needs it. On the 24th, it says, uh, come to our Christmas Eve service, etc. I want you to take one on your way out. And I want you to invite somebody. Point number four. It's bringing me to my point number four. It goes together. Praise God by helping others during the holiday season. You know why some people are depressed? Because it's all about you. I dare him. Tell me about me. If you wake up 
and the world centers around you. It's all about you. I believe that God puts people in our place for a reason, in our paths. Even if you've lost a loved one, find somebody else that's grieving this holiday season and tell them weeping may endure for a night. By joy, can you say joy? It comes in the morning. Find somebody that's grieving this holiday season and say, in my father's house are many mansions. Find somebody during this holiday season. Send some money to Angel Tree. Yes, I need some more folks to give some money. St. James, uh, watching online, virtual folks, send some money to Angel Tree so we can buy toys for families who are in need. The Bible says that it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. And the Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver. Point number five, and I'm out. Tell your neighbor he's almost out. Point number five. You cannot praise God appropriately without giving God a shout out. I had a friend of mine the other day. He called me up and said, hey, man, you missed my birthday. I said, oh, I had it in my phone, but Siri didn't remind me. Siri messed up sometimes. I tell Siri to take me home and to take me to Walmart. Come on, somebody. But the next day I woke up and I sh shot him a shout out. I said, happy birthday, man. I said, I'm so sorry about your birthday. I, I said, I have a card in the mail with some money in it. You know, folks like money. Y'all know that, right? He hit me back and said, thank you for the shout out. And then the spirit spoke to me and I said to myself, people like shout outs. We give folks a shout out for their anniversary. Uh, if you like football and your team is doing well, we give our football team a shout out. If our children are doing well in school, something that we like, we give them a shout out. A shout out is given to express gratitude, to say to somebody, I like what you're doing. And my brothers and my sisters, don't let the devil fool you now. There is power in a shout out. Say shout out. Some. 94.8 says, shout unto the Lord, all ye earth, be grateful and bless his holy name. Joshua shouted, and the Jericho wall fell down. Bartimaeus shouted, son of David, have mercy on me. I'm going somewhere, and he received his healing. In Acts 16.28, uh, Paul cried out to the uh, jailer, uh, don't harm yourself, do yourself no harm, we are all here. In John 11, Jesus cried out, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came uh, walking uh, in Matthew 27, 50. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, I commend my spirit, hung his head and died. So the psalmist said in Isaiah 12, 4, he says in that day, watch this, give praise to the Lord and proclaim his holy name. Make known to all the nation what the Lord has done. Bless him and exalt his name. And then in verse number five, he says, sing to the Lord, for he has done gracious things to you. Has God done anything for anybody in here? Let this be known to all the world. So when we give a shout out, say shout out. We are letting the whole world know what God has done for us. And in verse number six, slow it down, Dr. Williams. He says, shout out to the Lord. Sing joy to Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel. I'm sorry, but God's been good to me. Can I give God a shout out? Can I tell God thank you for waking me up this morning? Can I give God a shout out? Can I tell God thank you for saving my life during the pandemic? Can I give God a shout out? I'm going to pray to myself. Thank you, God, for my family. Thank you, God. For St. James United Methodist Church. Thank you, God, for being a bridge over troubled water. Thank you, God, for being my help in ages past. Thank you, God, for healing my wife when she had cancer. Thank you, God. Somebody give God a shout out. Come on and give God some praise in here. Give him a shout out. Be thankful to God. Bless God's holiness. Give him a shout out. Give him a shout out. Give him a shout out because nobody 
can do you like Jesus. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But God's been good to me. Has he been good to anybody in here? He picked me up when I was down in the valley. Turn. Turn. Am I scaring somebody? Am I frightening somebody? Because their folks can give a shout out in the snow during a football game. We should be able to give God a shout out because this is the day. Keep on giving the Falcons a shout out. I'm a Cowboys fan, but Jerry Jones didn't save myself. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, I think I better stop now. And all he's done. Some of y'all say, what's wrong with him? His anger has turned away. Can I give you three reasons why you ought to praise God? And I'm done. Can I give you three? Number one, he's good. Number two, he's good. Number three, he's... Thank you, thank you, thank you. Be seated. Thank you, online audience. God, forgive me for my sin. I just sinned against you. I hate the word audience. That's a person who come and they're spectators to our online congregation. Thank you today for tuning in. And I want to open heaven's doors myself today. And here's what I'm gonna do today now. I don't feel like begging. I, I don't feel like playing games. Either you want Jesus Christ or you don't. I believe there comes a time when folks have to have to decide. As for me and my house. So heaven's doors are open today. And I want to speak to somebody, I don't know why this is in my spirit, who is on the verge of giving up. Depression, you're battling depression. And you are saying to God, how am I going to make it? You shall draw from the wells of living water. Jesus is your source of strength. He's your lifeline. So if you're out there today and if you're struggling, you can call me personally. I'm surrounded with uh, wonderful leaders, with uh, outstanding pastors, and we will pray for you today. But if you want to join this church family, all you have to do is just go online, follow the instructions, and you can become a member of God's family and a part of St. James United Methodist Church. Do not tune off. We are not done yet. I pray that you've been blessed today. And I pray that I didn't frighten you. But I'm telling you, Jeremiah said it's like fire. Shut up in my bones. God bless you. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise for the message and the messenger. A holiday praise. At this time, guess what time it is, everybody? It is offering time. It is a time in the service where we continue to worship God through our giving. And so with the various means of how you can give on the screen... If you're here in the sanctuary and you would like to give via cash or check, just slip up your hand and the ushers will make sure that you have an offering envelope. Hallelujah. And just as a reminder, we tithe back 10% of what we receive back out into this community so that we can continue to be the hands, the feet, and the heart of Jesus to so many 
who come through our parking lot every month through our free food Saturday, through our angel tree. If you have not been able to go out on Amazon and actually buy any of the items, then as Pastor said, feel free to do a donation today. Whatever we weren't able to get through Amazon, we will be going shopping for the rest of those items this week. So please be as generous as the Lord leads. Now, let us go before the Lord in prayer. Most gracious, holy, and sovereign God, giver of every good and perfect gift. Lord, in this moment, we offer back to you just a portion of that which you have given to us. Lord, we know that we cannot outgive you. But Lord, because we love you, because you've been good to us, because you keep on blessing us financially and otherwise, Lord, we give back to you the tithe that you asked for. Lord, knowing, God, that out of obedience, your word says that you would rebuke the devourer from us. So, God, we thank you that even if we're shaky in our finances, that, Lord, if we could just trust you with the tithe, Lord, we would watch you open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessing, Lord, that we don't even have room enough to receive. So, Lord, receive this now as our act of worship unto you. It is in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Now, let's receive these media announcements. Thank you for worshiping with the St. James United Methodist Church. We invite you to worship with us in person or online every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. Attention all servant workers. Please join Pastor Williams for a dinner in your honor right here at the church this Friday, December 17th from 6.30 to 8.30. Please visit our website to RSVP under the events tab. The SHARE Ministry is inviting you to share the love of Jesus Christ by giving to those in need in our annual Angel Tree Celebration. Monetary donations can be made by visiting the church website and selecting Angel Tree Donations on the St. James Giving Portal. All gifts will be distributed this Saturday from 1130 to 1230 during the Angel Tree Giving Program. Join us for a very special candlelight experience this Christmas Eve at 6 p.m. as we celebrate the gift of our Savior's birth. Pastor Williams is personally inviting you to join us for this very special worship service as we light the Christ candle for Advent. Submitting yourself to extended prayer and fasting is a life-altering experience that will develop your faith and draw you nearer to God. St. James UMC will begin the new year with a corporate Daniel Fast, January 2nd through the 23rd. Save the date. Our watch night service is designed to celebrate what God has done over the past year and to proclaim that our God is able for the new year. On December 31st, we will have only one live worship service at 7 p.m., but there will be two exciting pre-service experiences for both the youth and adults beginning at 5.30 p.m. The CMY Ministry will present the Exhibition Edition Experience from 5.30 to 8.30. The evening will include food and be full of activities such as games, vision, discussions, fellowship, and worship. Confirm your child's participation by RSVPing under the Events tab on the church website. There will be a cash prize for the youth who brings the most friends. Tell a friend to tell a friend. My name is Reverend Tavares Stevens. My name is Reverend Kimberlyn Sinkfield. And my name is Dr. Gregory Williams, and we want you to know confirmation, confirmation is coming. Confirmation is coming? For real? Yeah. Oh. For any new confirmants who are shy or quiet, uh, I was that kid, and fun fact, I got a reward for being quiet um, when graduating. They will give you rewards. Yeah, it was fun. We met a lot of new, like a lot of people. Um, I learned a lot about like spiritual stuff. I think it was a good experience. Really, it was like every Sunday it just was, oh I'm 
do I have to stay after church because I get to see the confirmation class or we get to talk to people and we used to all play games like before we started class and that was always something really fun to look forward to and just being with everybody because usually like when you have to stay after church because your mom's talking or something you get upset but this was something to look forward to so I think that was fun. I enjoyed the first we meet with food and that food that brings everyone in that makes connections with people and I enjoyed not just the food but like the conversations over food. Like nobody really knew each other the first day so we just looking around. Uh, but as confirmation went on we all just started to form a relationship that was special to us and I think that's that and learning, getting, forming that same connection with God is what confirmation is about, to be honest. Uh, I think they should be excited about confirmation because it really strengthens that connection and love for God. Um, you know, it opens your eyes to, you know, various scriptures and his teachings and we as disciples, you know, we're taught like from the Bible we need to go out and, you know, show Jesus' love and display it in our everyday actions. And I think confirmation really um, strengthens that. Confirmation is a great place of study where you can learn more about the Bible and more about yourself and you can also share your experiences with other people and it just teaches you to like make new friends, you can have a good social group, but you can also learn about God in a fun way. Confirmation! Girls, come! Confirmation is coming soon! Please email confirmation at stjamesumc.org for more information. Amen. Let's give God praise for all that God is doing through this congregation called St. James. And just two announcements. Today is a very special day. Our very own pastor's son's birthday is today, Justin Williams, who's not here at 8 o'clock, but who will be here at 11 o'clock. But we just want to shout him out today and wish him a happy birthday. He's a freshman at Georgia State University. So let's give God praise for Justin. And then also, if there's anyone who is wanting to give their life to Christ or join the church, I and membership will be here after the service. So you don't have to come up. You can just wait till the service is over and we can receive you that way. Amen? Amen. So now let us stand for this benediction. And then also, as you depart today, the ushers have the cards that Pastor Williams was talking about. So invite somebody to church. You're not on the hook for whether they show up, but you are on the hook for making the invitation. Amen? Amen. May the strength of God sustain us. May the power of God preserve us. May the hands of God protect us. And may the way of God direct us. May the love of God go with us and grant us joy, unspeakable joy, both this day and every day, in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Go in peace and have a great week.